Welcome back to Cool Halo's Comic Books. For this episode, I want to take a look at Jason Aaron's run on Thor, basically Thor to the Mighty Thor, where, I guess, forgive me, spoilers, but I guess, it, you know, it's per, I feel like it's well enough known at this point, where uh, he has Jane Foster pick up Mjolnir, Thor's, hand, Thor's hammer, become Thor. Um, it's just, it's, uh, it's, such a good, it's such a good read, it's such a good run, um, and I would say that probably the Mighty Thor, this, this whole arc, or a whole couple arcs, is probably my favorite in all of comic books that I've read to, to date. It's just, it's so good, and I want to kind of give you a primer about, you know, where you can jump in, where you should jump in, and, and why you should definitely go out there and read these books before anything else comes out to kind of paint a different picture, or, or, or possibly a different picture, of what it means for Jane Foster to be Thor. Um, so that, that's where I want to dive in. Uh, just right up front at the beginning, uh, just if you like this channel, if, if you like the content that I'm putting out, please do drop a like and subscribe to the channel. I greatly appreciate it, and it just helps the channel grow, helps other people find the channel. And for this episode, I have to thank Bob Ryer from Talking Comics, because if it wasn't for him and, and, and that, that podcast, I wouldn't, have found, um, I wouldn't have found Mighty Thor. I'd never read Thor, uh, another Thor comic book before, and it just, he was never one of those characters that I was, I was really interested in until I started listening to Talking Comics, which is right about the time that Mighty Thor came out. And after listening to a few episodes and Bob talking about what was going on in this book, what Jason Aaron was doing with the story, um, and what Russell Downerman and Matthew Wilson were doing with the artwork in, in this, this book, uh, you know, he just spoke so, so passionately about it and just so excitedly about everything that was going on in this book. But I had to check it out, so I, I went down to my local comic book shop. Fortunately, they had you know the first, I think, four or five issues. Picked those all up, read those through, and was immediately hooked, and have never looked back since. And, you know, and as I said at the beginning, to now to this point, you know, now that this is Mighty Thor has has completed, this is probably one of my favorite arcs in, in all of the comic books that I've read so far. So. Um, so basically just kind of a little bit of a primer before. Um, Jason Aaron wrote Thor for a long time. Before this arc of Thor, it was Thor God of Thunder, which he was doing with Issa Ribic. And uh, another phenomenal artist, uh, really good storytelling there, especially everything with uh, Gore the God Killer, everything like that in, in God of Thunder is also really good and worth checking out. But they had a completely different feel. And, and I don't know if it's because Thor is kind of at least around this part was just kind of a little bit more of a, a, an outside book for Marvel. Um, but they had a lot of consistency. You know, Jason Aaron has been writing Thor for years. Um, Issa Rivik did a, a huge chunk, uh, you know, for, for multiple years of Thor, uh, God of Thunder. And then when it switched to Thor and then Mighty Thor, you know, the, the artwork gauntlet got passed to Russell Dowderman and Matthew Wilson, and they did everything from, from basically Thor all the way to the end of, of the Mighty Thor. So the consistency in, in the story and the consistency in the artwork, it, it, it's, it's, it's just it's complete. It's, it's phenomenal. And you can see from the covers, um, it's just really, really cool style, very detailed. The colors are just perfect. You know, Jason Aaron brings a very epic storytelling to these chapters of Thor. And, and Russell Downerman and Matthew Wilson you know, absolutely step up and match that effort with, with their artwork. Everything you see on the covers is exactly what these books look like inside. Every page, every frame of every page is just as well done, is, is, is beautiful to look at as, as any of these covers that you would see. So it's just, there, there's that consistency and that quality is, is just, it, it really helps tell the story. And, but the story it is, it is on another level. Um, so, so at any rate, when, when Jason Aaron transitioned from God of Thunder into Thor, at the very end of God of Thunder, and, and I, I say definitely check that out, that one out, go back and, and read, if you like, at least the last couple of uh, issues to kind of get a sense of what happened, what fell apart, because obviously Thor lost his ability to wield Mjolnir. And then all of a sudden, when, when it switched to Thor, now Thor was a woman. And I, I even remember when this happened, there was a story on NPR talking about how, you know, I guess, 
revolutionary is the wrong term, but it was it was, it was a big deal that it was that Thor was a woman now, and what what did that mean? And for this whole the first eight issues, which is which is the Thor run, um, that was it was it was an exploration of what does it mean for Thor to be a woman, certainly, but especially by the end, the big question was okay, well, who is Thor? There was a lot of there's a lot of questions. I mean, is it Lady Sif? Could it be Lady Frida? Um, that kind of the mystery as far as who that was, that was the big question mark, and that was the reveal in issue number eight. I mean, again, you know, apologies, but but mild spoilers. It was it was revealed to be Jane Foster. Now, when it when it switched to the Mighty Thor, it was basically immediately as soon as we knew who Thor was, and so that's when it became the Mighty Thor. Um, now, Mighty Thor is Thor has been titled the Mighty Thor in the previous or in the past, but there's a long time since it was, and I really do think it's fitting that they went back to Mighty Thor uh, once you know that it's Jane Foster who's, who's wielding the hammer. Now, as you can tell, I mean, pretty much immediately, right, right from the end of issue number eight, Jane Foster is not, she does not fit in your typical mold of what you would think of a superhero or even their, uh, you know, secret identity of a superhero would be. Um, she is is wearing, you know, th this kind of headscarf. She is, you know, very thin, um, pale. It's it's clear that something's going on, and, and I I don't feel like this is too much of a spoiler, but I mean, it, it it is it is talked about pretty much from the word go that Jane Foster also has cancer, and that's, I mean just such an interesting element of the story and and that's where Jason Aaron leans into that he I don't know I don't know where this comes from but that's what he brought to this story and that's what shifts gears from you know what does it mean for Thor to be a woman to all of a sudden what does it mean for Jane Foster Jane Foster to be Thor and that's again why I just think that that mighty Thor is such a fitting title once once he once that is revealed and, and these two covers up front are just so interesting to me, and, and I wanted to have these up here because you know this this cover of number one obviously it's you know Thor is a woman and it's it's a very cool stylized Thor and she's her identity is hidden. But then when they went to the mighty Thor and you've got the reveal, they it's the same pose but you know split down the middle with Jane Foster and it's it's I I think this one cover just so perfectly depicts. What, what is going on, or one of the underlying themes in the Mighty Thor run, which is it's, it's this, you know, diversity or, or dichotomy between Jane Foster and Thor. Um, one, of, one of the other underlying themes here is that the world needs a Thor. So when Thor was unable to pick up the hammer, wield the hammer, become the God of Thunder, the world needs a Thor. Somebody else had to do it, and Jane Foster was worthy. Um, I, I wrote it down because I wanted to get it right, but you know, if you're not too familiar with Thor, you know, basically there's an inscription on Thor's hammer, which reads, Whosoever holds this hammer, if she be worthy, shall possess the power of Thor. So basically, if the hammer of Thor, Mjolnir, finds you worthy, then you can pick up the hammer and you can wield the powers of Thor. And and so that's that's the other thing I would say that is just so fascinating in this is as you read it, you know, obviously there's there's a thought of well why was Thor unworthy? What happened to make Thor unworthy? And there's a little bit of that at the end of, of God of Thunder. There's actually a five issue series that uh, Russell Downerman and Jason Aaron also did called Unworthy Thor, which I'll probably talk about later, that delves specifically into that. But um, the other thing is, well why why is Jane Foster worthy? So Think about that as you read this, um, and you know once once this once the mighty Thor kicks off, you know you know who Thor is, but it, there's still some nobody else does, and there's some exploration of that, and you know even even from I, I, I've now read all of the God of Thunder, and and it's good, and there's especially you know everything with Thor, the God Killer, and that the first big arc there is really interesting stuff. And I, and I liked it, but I didn't. I didn't really become attached to Thor until Jane Foster was Thor. Um, what is done here, what Jason Darren does here with the character development of of, of Thor, Odin's son Thor, and with uh, Jane Foster, and and their relationship basically from where 
every, every, every aspect of that possible relationship you could think of is really compelling. And it is some, some really masterful storytelling and, and you know, character work. Um, and geez, the, the depth that you come out of this whole arc with uh, you know, a, an understanding of, of Odin's son and Jane Foster um, is just, it, it's, it's, it is, I'd almost say it's kind of unique to, to any kind of storytelling, um, just, just where, where the story goes. It's really powerful stuff. It is, it is phenomenally well done, and that's why I want to make this video, because, you know, there's a lot of buzz around this now because, um, you know, uh, Marvel is going to make Thor uh, Love and Thunder, and it, it's been revealed that Jane Foster is going to become Thor. Uh, and Taika Waititi has said that, you know, he read Jason Aaron's run, and that's what inspired him, and, and I totally understand it. I just don't know how they're going to do it in the MCU, and what goes on in the Mighty Thor here, it, it totally stands on its own, uh, and, it, and it, deserves, it deserves you to go out and read it all on its own first, uh, just so you can experience this, and then see whatever Taika Waititi brings to the table. And I have total faith in him. I'm sure he's going to make a phenomenal movie. I don't see how they're going to do this story. Maybe they do, but I mean, this this the Mighty Thor stands on its own for sure, and and that's where you need to go out and read it. Um, I will say that because of all the hype, these are going to be. I I don't know. I can't recommend that you would go out and try and find all the floppies uh, to read these. It would probably be a touch expensive. Um, you might be better off finding the trades or, or like the omnibus, or this also might be the perfect scenario where you know get on Marvel Unlimited and read these uh, first. Um, but definitely, you know, I I would not be surprised if like for you as it was for me, where these become some of your favorite books, and, and maybe you decide to go and seek them out. Um, I mean, the storytelling and the artwork both are just so phenomenal in these. I would I would say one other like footnote is um, if you're going to dive into Mighty Thor, just start reading it. Don't look at any of the titles, and especially don't look at any of the covers. Anything after six ninety nine. So from seven hundred on, don't look at the covers. Just start reading at number one and go on, because it'll tip you off to kind of one of the endpoints of the story that you might already know about it. But um, if you don't know about it, just, just start reading it, number one, and let the story develop, and let it take you where, where it will go. Um, and it, I guarantee you that it will be worth it. It is a, it is a phenomenal journey, and it, I, it will probably pull at your heartstrings a couple times. I'm not going to show it to you, but I will tell you, and when you see it, you'll understand that other than these covers, my other favorite cover is uh, from issue 706. It's a, it's a double-sided cover by Russell Dowderman, and it is phenomenal. It is it is kind of the perfect capstone to this arc. Uh, and 705 is a close second to that. But but 706 is just so such a perfect, perfect cover. But you can't look at it. You gotta promise me not to look at it until you go through and read it. Because then you'll see and, and you'll understand it. But it's just it is such a it's such a great run. And I, I would say that you know if 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 you ever have a conversation with anybody where they just don't think that comic books are a real art form, that, that comic books are not a literal, uh, uh, literary way to tell a story, or, or if the comic books don't have a high level of storytelling, I would say that these runs, and especially the Mighty Thor, the whole thing, that, that would be probably one of the tops of my lists to, to, to show to somebody and say, all right, read this and tell me that, that, that comic books are not an art form, because I don't think I don't think that's possible. And, and read this and tell me that you, you still don't think the comic books can, can bring power to a story, bring weight to a story. Um, because that's, that's, that's what Jason Aaron, Russell Downer, and Matthew Wilson, that's what they do with this, uh, with this whole series. And it, it just, man, it's just so good. It, you've got to check it out some way, somehow, and just experience the story, experience the characters. Um, yeah, it's just, it's very much worth reading, and uh, if, you're, if you're not familiar, if you don't know anything about it, um, have no fear, just jump just jump right in, if you go to Marvel Unlimited, jump right in at Thor number one, and just start reading, and uh, you'll be up to speed 
almost immediately, because again, me, I had no knowledge of Thor or the backstory, and I just started reading it, the Mighty Thor number one, and, and within two issues I knew all that I needed to know, and I was hooked. So, yeah, check it out. It's just, yeah, I, I hate to gush, but it is such a good story. It is, it is such a, this is, this is one of the, like, if you read no other books, this is, this is the one to read. Uh, it's just, it's just that good. So, yeah, I will, I will stop there. I will let you head out, you know, down to your local comic book shop or whatever to, to find the story and check it out. Um, yeah, yeah, if you can, support your local comic book shop. In the meantime, I'm going to go and I'm going to read some more comic books, and uh, you should do that too. So, thanks very much for watching. Hopefully you liked the video. Take care, and we'll catch you on the next one.